And now, let's ask a different question. When do we slide and when do we shift when it comes to the supply curve? We have to do the same thing with supply that we did with demand. So I'm going to start out here with the quantity and with the price. And now we're going to think about, to, sorry, it's a demand curve. Now we're going to think about the first supply curve and the second supply curve. And what would cause us to shift from one to the other, or what might cause us to slide along one of the supply curves. All right, so to begin with, if you've got your redacted notes with you here, what I'd like to talk about is this movement right here, which is the movement along the supply curve. And the movement along the supply curve is caused by one and only one thing, and that would be it's caused by a price change. Okay, so we have a price change here, and when the price changes, here's how it works. Let's say the price is 5, and let's say that this price is 10. Sellers who see the price is 5 think to themselves, that's not very high. We can't make too much profit producing that good, so we won't sell too much. Right? So we'll just call this quantity 1. But if the price was 10, sellers along this supply curve think to themselves, hmm, that's okay. At $10 we can make more profit, and they'll increase the quantity that they supply. The only thing we've changed is the, the price, and therefore the location along the supply curve itself. So when price changes, just like with demand, we move along the supply curve. Now, the other thing we worry about are actual shifts of the supply curve, and this occurs a number of different ways. All right? So when this happens, notice that we're going to move the entire curve over, all right, and so now we're going to think about things that violate Keteris Paribus. All right, so we're actually changing the location of the, uh, the supply curve, and this only happens when something other than price changes. So let's go through a list of things that we might consider as having an effect upon the location uh, of the supply curve. The first would be inputs. Every business needs inputs or resources to be able to produce the final product that it sells. For instance, you need laborers to help assemble products, you might need raw materials, you might need computers, you might need land, you might need a factory. You need all of these things. And so inputs are, are what businesses need to make the final product. So let's, let's keep it simple. Suppose that the, one of the inputs is labor, and suppose that labor costs go up. Would that be good or bad for your business? Try to answer that question right now. That would be bad for your business, right? Labor costs go up. It's going to squeeze your profit margins, and therefore it's going to make you less likely to produce the good. So when input prices or costs increase, we would find ourselves shifting backwards, right, because the firm becomes less willing to make the good. On the other hand, if you got some sort of uh, better technology, cheaper technology, you get a better deal on a piece of land, or you could buy a, a factory um, because it was foreclosed, another business went bankrupt, these would all be good things, right? If you could pay your workers less, these would all be good things for a business, right? And so we then shift the, the supply curve out. So that's the first one we worry about. The second one, that we worry about here is technology. Let me ask you a question. If you had better technology, would that be good or bad for your business? I hope you said it would be good. All right, so better technology, shift the whole supply curve out. What does that mean? It means that whatever price you're currently charging, if you've got better technology to make the good, let's say you were charging $10, and this was your old supply curve based on your old technology, now you have better technology that you can use, you suddenly at $10 become much more willing to produce the good because the better technology allows you to do one of two things, either produce a higher quality good, which is going to be more successful, or uh, produce the same good at a lower cost. Either way, it's very good for your business. Right? So technology shifts the curve out. We don't worry about losing technology. No business would adopt bad technology. It only going to adopt better, uh, better technology. Point number three for us to think about here. 
um, kind of a broad category. We got taxes and we've got subsidies. So if you're a business, you either pay tax rates or sometimes the government subsidizes your activities. So for instance, uh, the government's gone to a lot of effort lately uh, to promote various types of green initiatives. Uh, for instance, solar power would be one, wind power would be another. And the government sometimes gives these businesses subsidies or tax breaks. Uh, and so if you're a business that's uh, producing solar power and you're eligible for a government subsidy, well, that makes you more willing to supply the good. On the other hand, if you're a business and you're getting hit with a high uh, capital gains tax or corporate profit tax, your supply or willingness to produce the good probably gets shifted back to the left. Okay, So taxes and subsidies can play a big role in the decisions of businesses and their willingness to supply the good. Here's our fourth point uh, to think about. That would be expectations. We talked about expectations when we talked about things that shift the demand curve uh, as well. So uh, let's just think about some of the things that can happen uh, to businesses. So let's say a business um, expects the economy to weaken. Is that good or bad for their business? Well, it kind of depends, right? But for the most part, if you expect the economy to weaken and you sell a normal good, then your expectation would be that your sales would go down and so therefore you're going to produce less. Now if you happen to be producing an inferior good and you think that your customers aren't going to have as much money in the future because the economy is weaker, you might stand to benefit from that. Certainly dollar stores, Walmart, uh, and a lot of other places that sold certain basic uh, services and commodities and produce were very successful during the recent economic contraction. And so those types of businesses actually would view an expectation of a deteriorating economy as an opportunity to expand their production. All right? So just think about it from the standpoint, is it good or bad for certain types of businesses? Certainly expectations about the future play a role on the supply side the same way they did on the, on the demand side. And then there's number five right here, which is our last idea. And this is also the same idea we talked about on the demand side. That would be the number of sellers. So how many businesses are actually out there producing the item? And, and when you have a large number of sellers, what we would simply say is the overall supply in the marketplace increases. And if certain businesses were to you know, go out of business uh, or simply decide to relocate from a particular area, then the supply would contract. So all we're really doing here is asking a simple question. If something changes, is it good for my business? I'm going to shift the supply curve out. If it's bad for my business, I'm going to shift the supply curve back. And then the other thing is the price, and the price would just slide me along one of these supply curves. Wouldn't actually change the location, because remember, the price is built into our model. Okay, so that's how we slide and shift.